Welcome everyone on the day 22. We know that whenever we run a Java application, it's running in memory. So all the objects that you go and create when the application goes down, that also loses its significance. You know, you just lose those objects. What if you want to maintain, what if you want to go and store those objects, maintain their state, even if between the program execution, you don't want to lose that data or object. To do it with the concept called serialization and deserialization. Let's see and get started with a hands-on example that how in the world of Java, the serialization concept works out. So once we have done it, let's try to move on and talk about that how in the world of Java, the objects could be transferred over the wire, how the objects could be stored in the hard disk or it could be stored in the database. For that, we need to understand a concept called serialization. Let's get started. Serialization in Java. Let's first of all understand the very basic meaning of the serialization itself, sir. What does the serialization mean? So let's try to understand that. Serialization means that when you have the Java object, right, the process of converting the Java object in the form of the byte stream. What is the byte stream? A stream of zero and one only. And why do we need to do it? Because every time you go and store anything inside the hard disk or you want to go and transfer over the network, you can only transfer in the form of the bytes, zero and one. So the process by which you go and store the JavaScript objects on the hard disk so that you don't lose it or you pass over the network so that you pass that information object from the one place to the another, that's typically is called as a serialization. And when you try to get it back from the hard disk, the form of the byte stream back to the Java objects, that's the example of deserialization. And the object which you get back is basically again a cloned object. So normally if you go and do the serialization and you bring it back, it's more of like of a deep cloning, deep cloning. So again serialization and deserialization is a method which is sometimes also employed when you would like to go and deep clone an object. What are the other scenarios? You have created an object and you don't want to lose it because normally every time you restart your Java program you lose that object. Then you go and serialize it and store that into the hard disk. If you have created an object which you feel is helpful and you want that to be sent over the network to some other place again the serialization could be used. So we have understood what is serialization now. What is serialization? What is serialization? Very simple when you go and convert the JavaScript object in the form of a byte stream to go and store that into the hard disk or you pass on over the network. That's the what what part. The next important question is that how do you do it? Can every class be serialized? No. For an object to be serialized the class has to undergo few things. What are those few things? So every time you go and define a class, if that object you want to be serialized, it has to go and implement an interface called as a serializable interface. Serializer inter. Now what is the serializer interface? It's again a kind of a marker interface. It's an example of a marker interface. Who are the marker interface? Marker interfaces are one who is only used for marking or indicating that this is the functionality of the class going to be. They don't have anything inside that. It's just the name of the interface. So if a class has to serialize, it has to go and implement the serializer interface. That's number one. And the second thing is that if I'm making it as a serializable interface, it need to have something called as a serial version UID equal to something 23L. Now this, what happens? Why do we need it? So every time you go and uh, you have an object and you serialize it to the stream right? and then you have to recover back to the initial object, you always do with the help of some form of the serial version ID. If you provide it, it will be used to come back. If not, Java will use the default Java will by default use its 
internally randomly generated serial version user ID. It's always a good practice that you should go and define your own serial version user ID when you're trying to serialize a Java object. Now let's try to understand with the help of the code itself how the serialization can happen. So let me go back to my Eclipse. Right, and first of all, let me go and define a package here. Let me go and define a package inside this and let me go and call it as serializations. Okay, let me go and close all these class files just to make things very clear to you. And let me go and define this class called as a person. I go and say that implements CDLIGable. As soon as I go and do this, I go and implement it. Then there's a warning. And then I go and add the default serial version user ID. This is not compulsory, but if you don't do it, you might, uh, you know, lose the hold that how the serialization, digitalization is being happened. So I go and define this one. Now this guy person will also have some fields. For example, this person has something called as int id. And then it has something called as a string name. So this is serializable class. And then I have a constructor also here. Uh, source. And then generate constructors using the fields. I go and click on the generate. So this is a person class which is serializable I donor, right? So now what I going to do that in order to understand serialization, let me go and define another class called as a test class. And this is a class where I'll go and serialize, do serializing. So I need to have a PSVM, public static void main method, right? So first of all, I'll go and create the object of this person. So I go and say that person P1 equals to new person. And here inside that I go and pass Vishwa and the age 99. This is how it is. Okay, first of all, it is ID uh, and age. Let me go and do this and age. Let's change this to age. Here in this test, 99 is the first argument and then that should be Vishwa. Cool, eh? Now what I want to do, I would like to go and serialize it, serialize it. To serialize it, first of all, what I'll have to do, I'll have to go and create a file output stream. So I go and say that file, and uh, then I go and say that output stream. And for that, I go and say that fut equals to new file output stream. Now inside this, I'll have to go and pass the location where I would like to go and create this serialization for. So let me go and call it as path as say temp slash uh, person dot ser. You could give any name to this file that you go and want, right? So since I have done it, it can throw certain exception. So I'll have to go and uh, add the throw clause or I can surround with the try clash. Fair enough, so I go and do this. When this exception will happen, so again, I'll be talking about the try clash going ahead, but every time, for the now being, you can go and understand is that every time you feel that there's a block of the code which can which can go wrong, you always go and put inside the try and catch. And here, my chances are that I, the file that I'm trying to create that might not be found, so I go and say that file not found exception. Fair enough. Now I have done this, once it is done, I have to go and create the object output stream. So in this, I go and call as object. Sorry, there's a typo here. That's why object output stream. And I go and call it as out equals to new object output stream. And in this, I go and pass f out. Fair enough. Now again, this is throwing me error. Let me go and see that. So I go and say add the Coach. So I got the IO exception. So this happens if I'm not able to write this, then this exception can throw. So I go and add it further. You can ignore the try catch block for now if you're not getting it because we're going to talk about it in details. For now, you just understand that whenever in the world of the programming, any line we feel that can go wrong, we always go and wrap it with the try catch. If everything goes well, 
it executes as normal otherwise the catch part of the code that I have written will be able to handle those kind of exception situations and once it is done then I go and say that out dot write object and then I go and pass person p1 and after doing this then I'll have to go and do this out dot close and then finally I have to also go and do the fault dot close fair enough so if I go and run this let's try to see if it's getting serialized so if I go and run this application run Java application okay this is done and then I have to go into this location and see if that actually happened so in my if I go and open my terminal and you can see here I go to this location and I see that this file got created right in the windows you can actually go and pass to this location whatever that you have provided since it is my Mac I'm using my terminal and see that in this location I have this person.scr created. How do I do it? I can go and do the, actually the change directory and then I go and pass temp. And if I do ls, I see there's something called as person.scr. If I want to go and see what is the content of it in the terminal in the Linux world, you can use a command called as cat to see the content of it. So I go and type cat cat and then I go and say that person.scr. And if you see here, you get something, some, some gibberish value, something which is, has been, you know, in the encoded form so this is now stored person.scr so far what we have done is that we have been able to go and store it so I have this person object right I have this person object and this person object I went ahead and I serialized in the location call as temp slash person dot ser this whole process is called as a serialization now what I want to do is that I want to bring this back and this I'll be able to do it with the help of deserialization now let's try to see that how that happens so let me go to my Eclipse so I have already done the serialization so what I'll do now is that all this code I'll try to go and comment it out I'll do one comment it out and now what I need to do is that I'll go and deserialize it I know the serialize it so to deserialize it again I'll have to call the same stuff so I, instead of file output I'll go and say that file input stream f in equals to new file input string and in that I will have to go and pass the same file location which is the serialized perfect now if it is here then I'll have to go and uh, mm, perfectly fine let me go and see it is through the exception let me go and select through exception Instead of throwing a solution, I should go and typically do the try catch. This will look more elegant. So I go the try catch. Once it is done, then uh, to read, just like we have to write, we have the object output stream. To read, we have the object input stream. So I go and say the object input stream. And I go and call it as n equals to new object input stream. And I have one. Fair enough. Now again, this will throw some exceptions. So I have to go and add the catch clause. IO exception, I go and add it here. As you can see here. I can actually go and bring this at the top itself. Done. And after that, I have to go and read. So I go and say that uh, person object equals to in dot read 
object. Now this will always return an object, so I'll have to go and typecast it to the person. And then I go and call it as person. Fair enough. This itself can throw some error. So I go and say that add got loud sounding try. Class not found exception. Should of that. Let me go and put it here. And now this person, if I go and do this inside this, let me go and print sys out. It was p1 plus let's like this plus person. And I go and call it as p1 dot name person dot name. If I go and run this, let's try to see what happens. If you see here, right? If you see here, right? I have just reduced the font a little just to bring it into this frame. That this was the original object p1 and this is the new object which I got deserialized and I got it. These are two different objects. So what we see here we have a deep cloning. Deep cloning. And it is a clone because both of them have the same name Vishwa and the Vishwa itself. So with this we can actually go and store the objects into the hard disk transfer over the network, store into the database and the concept that we go and make use of is called serialization and deserialization in Java. So finally, we have completed day 22 as well. We have understood that how you can convert the Java objects into the bytes, zero and one, and then store into the hard disk. And again, read it back, the whole concept of serialization and deserialization. Very powerful concept. And as you make progress, you go and work in the industry, sometime or other, you'll have the usage of serializations. How is the learning going on? Keep me posted over the comments so that I know that how your experience of learning has been. Your small comments like help me, motivate me to keep on bringing these engaging comments. Keep learning, keep working hard and make sure that you're heading towards being the top 1% techies.